Welcome, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. And I want to welcome you to uh, the fifth annual 21st Century New Media Best Practices Webinar Training Series for our latest uh, session, which is all about new media best practices for Pinterest for Health. And my name is Lisa Peterson. I'm a new media education specialist with the sponsors of the series, which is our Center for Public Health Practice and the Center for Health Leadership here at UC Berkeley School of Public Health. And um, as we get started, I just want to invite you to let us know if you have any trouble hearing the audio uh, by typing in um, the issue in the chat box to the left. And that way we know uh, to troubleshoot any uh, audio uh, issues right away. And um, I'm really excited today uh, for today's topic this using Pinterest for public health, because I think we've seen more and more in the health field folks using the tool for communications. For instance, I just heard that last week the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development launched a new page. And yet, I think for others, this really is still very new and unfamiliar territory. So I think it's wonderful to have our guest speakers on with us today to share their own best practices and lessons learned on using Pinterest so that we can all be inspired and motivated to see how to use it ourselves. So a little bit about who we're going to be hearing um, from today. We have Christy Colley from the Hamilton County Public Health and Ray Mansour from the Chicago Department of Public Health. And I'm also going to be here as our tech support behind the curtain. And I'll also be helping to facilitate our conversation together as a moderator. And a little bit about where we're going to be exploring today. We'll go over a bit about housekeeping, and then Christy's going to walk us through an overview of Pinterest and how Hamilton County Public Health is using the tool. Next, Ray's going to take us on a deeper dive and have some tutorials and best practices for us. And then we're going to also have time for Q&A at the end of each presentation. And then at the very end, we'll do a wrap-up. So a bit about housekeeping um, as we move forward. Just be sure to have your phones on mute, and you can do that by entering star six. And as I mentioned before, if you have a question, please be sure to type that in the chat box, which is on the left-hand column. And we're also going to be monitoring the chat box um, for any questions or comments, or uh, even if you want to uh, type in a resource to share or a best practices or example of Pinterest boards that you would like to share, please be sure to use that in the chat box and we'll be able to moderate that and hopefully address them during the Q&A session following each presentation. And also I'll mention that we will be sending out links to the webinar recording and the slides and any resources to everyone after the uh, presentation via email. And if you are on board and want to join the conversation on Twitter, please feel free to use our hashtag CHLNM15 to join the conversation. And a little bit of um, checking in with folks. We have a poll here we wanted to do to see if you're currently using Pinterest in your work. If you could let us know uh, a little bit about where you're at. Okay, looks like we see some folks a little bit about half or so are not currently using Pinterest, although we do see some folks using it personally, but not for work. So the uh, great thing is, is that we have some wonderful guest speakers on today that are going to help kind of address along the continuum. If you're already using personally but not sure how to do for work, if you haven't yet started, and then also if you are using it but really want to learn how to create more impact, uh, get some key takeaways, some best practices to improve what you're doing, I think we're going to have that for you today. So that's really great. So before we get started, I want to go ahead and introduce our first speaker. I'm really honored to introduce Christy Colley. She's an electronic communication specialist with Hamilton County Public Health, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
And Christy's been employed in communication since 2002. And in addition, she's a freelance writer, has been a freelance writer for over 15 years, and has written two novels. So I think she has some great expertise in a diverse array of background in terms of communications. She also has a bachelor's in communications and a master's in education from Mount St. Joseph University. So I'm really excited to have Christy here, and I'm just going to hand it over to you, Christy. Welcome. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, welcome to all of you, and thanks for joining us for Pinterest for Health. Um, I'm very lucky to work for an organization like Hamilton County Public Health that values social media. Uh, they understand the ROI of social media, and so I, I get the chance to experiment a little on some of the smaller social media networks that are up and coming, like Pinterest. Our objectives for Pinterest personally are to drive traffic to our website, and that in turn helps with search engine optimization, SEO, and uh, we use our boards and our pins to um, disseminate information on health education and motivation to get people healthier and safer in our community. And uh, most of all on Pinterest, uh, we use it to tell our story. And we can do that much more so on Pinterest than any other social network because uh, you can post to Pinterest a lot more. And it's a sharing application, whereas the other social networks don't necessarily do that. Um, so we're really fortunate to be able to do that. So if you do decide to go into Pinterest, and I notice a lot of people aren't using it yet, and I hope by the end of uh, today, at the end of this webinar, you will, this infographic will be your future. And um, I, I also wanted to say that one advantage that we have for using Pinterest over Instagram um, is that uh, for those of you know, who use Instagram, you know that you can't um, connect your images to a URL. You can't connect it to a website. You can't even put a live link in the description on Instagram, whereas most of the images on Pinterest are connected to a URL, um, and you can also put URLs in the description. So it definitely has an advantage over Instagram, and I'll talk more about that later. So the possibilities on Pinterest uh, for public health can be endless. So before you uh, jump into Pinterest, you're probably going to ask, is Pinterest here to stay? And of course, social media is unpredictable. So I can't say definitively yes, but I can tell you that at Social Media Marketing World this year, 2015, uh, they were calling Pinterest the new Google because 39% of active users who use Pinterest search on Pinterest before they search on Google. And thus, Pinterest has become the third largest social media search engine uh, of course, after Facebook and Twitter. And I don't believe they included YouTube in that because I think YouTube would rank higher. Um, Pinterest was the fastest growing social network of 2013 and 2014, and uh, it's now up to 70 million users, which may not look like a lot compared to Twitter's 500 million or Facebook's billion, but if you look at the minutes used per month on the networks, You'll see Pinterest has um, an average of 77 minutes used per month on Pinterest, which beats Twitter's 36 minutes. So um, another company, Pinterly, broke those numbers down into session, per session. So per session, people are spending 15 plus minutes on Pinterest, which is right up there with YouTube, uh, which is a lot more than the, 15, or the 12 minutes they spend when they're on Facebook and the three minutes they spend while they're on Twitter. So the numbers may be smaller in the millions, but uh, for how long they're using per session is much longer, and that's how we get to tell our stories on Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is always classically skewed more toward women, uh, but in 2014 the number of men using Pinterest doubled. So they used to be about 20%, now it's closer to 40%. And um, in general, uh, women use Pinterest as a wish list, and men use Pinterest as a shopping cart. Now the median age of people using Pinterest is 40, excuse me. But if you look at the daily, uh, the majority of daily active users, they're under 40. So um, Pinterest is right there with Instagram if you look at the chart when it comes to millennials. And as a public health organization, millennials 
are the people we're trying to reach. Millennials are the ones that uh, we want to answer our call to action. Um, Instagram is used to create images, whereas um, Pinterest is used to curate images. So um, that's an advantage for us because as, as public health entity, we're not out there snapping photos every day, um, you know, the way the kids on Instagram are doing. Uh, but being able to put them out there on Pinterest and still reach the same millennial audience is very important, uh, and being able to reach them with a visual format unlike Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. So the question really isn't should we pin, the question is what should we pin? And of course in order to do that, you need to know how to use Pinterest. So I'm going to try to share my desktop here and show you what Pinterest looks like. So this is my um, personal Pinterest page. Chris, I'm Christie's Books on just about everything. So when you go to a page on Pinterest, you know, you're going to see the avatar, the name, hopefully a link to their website, a little description, and then you'll see their page. And their page actually tells you a little bit. Um, I have 26 boards, over 1,000 pins, likes, followers, and following. And I'm going to click on our page, which we're already logged into. Um, the first thing you're going to do when you sign on to Pinterest is to um, create a board. And um, even a more rudimentary uh, description, if you're not familiar with Pinterest, it's like a virtual bulletin board. So um, you know those old cork boards that we used to pin articles of interest to us. Imagine you had 30 of those and each one represented a different category. So you can put um, articles about bikes on one board and articles or pictures about, I don't know, diabetes prevention on another board. That's kind of like how Pinterest works, only of course it's much more neat and tidy and doesn't take up as much room as 30 boards. So you're, you're curating images and those images are connected to more information on Pinterest. So um, the first thing you're going to do is create a page as a business, and that's what ours is here. And Raid's going to talk about that later, so I'm going to skip that part. So once you do that, you're going to create a board. And creating a board is really easy. You're just going to um, click on it. You're going to give it a title, a description. You're going to fit it into a category. A lot of ours are in health and fitness. You can put a map on a board, but Raid's going to talk about that in his section. He's also going to talk about collaborators and crowdsourcing on Pinterest, so I will skip that little section too. You can choose to keep your board secret. Um, for the purposes of this webinar, I have a secret board which will show up at the bottom. It means none of your followers uh, can see it. It has a little lock on it. Um, and all the rest of these boards are public. And just one note about your boards. Um, we kind of started with one board and then you know, we saw that, well, this, this category is getting a lot of pins, so let's make that a separate board. So Women's Health and Fitness got a separate board and um, Crafts got a separate board. And then I found out that I've noticed that a lot of our crafts counted kind of as reduce, reuse, recycle. So I changed that into a different um, DIY board and separated them. There's a lot of crafts on um, Pinterest that originally started as kind of a crafter's pin board and a cook pin board. So that's why you'll, you'll notice a lot more recipes and crafts. You want to make sure you keep your more popular boards above the fold. And of course what that means is when somebody looks at your page, Right here is the fold. You want to keep it up here so people don't have to scroll. A lot of times people won't scroll, so you'll put your most popular boards right here. So once you created the board, you're ready to go. I think Pinterest is just one of the easiest social networks um, to just kind of start up and go on. So once you have your board, you can start to pin. And um, Pinterest, as I said, has one of the um, better search engines of all social media. And so I'm just going to put public health in here and show you what the search looks like. At the top of the page, it's going to bring up different categories. So if you are actually looking for a career in public health, it will actually narrow it down for you and pull only the ones that are in the, in the category of career. It's called a guided search. So it helps you narrow your topic down even more, which is nice. And when you pull up the search itself, you're going to get all the pins. So these are all the pins that use the keyword public health. You can click on your pins to search your pins. I'm sure we have a lot of pins that say public health. Uh, you can pick pinners, 
and I'm hoping we're at the top of this list. Yes, we're first. That could be because I'm logged in as us. <laughs> and then you can click on the boards related to public health. And again, we're first in that. I think we're the local health district with the most people following us on Pinterest. So that could be why we're popping up first too. Um, you can see uh, CDCs in here. And, and we did uh, originally guide a lot of our books by what CDC did. So I'm going to go back to pins here. There are three different ways to pin. And the first way is a repin. So you're going to find a pin that you like on Pinterest. And this is about the top 50 jobs in public health, which would obviously relate to us. And before I pin it, I just want to show you all of the detail. And for those of you who are already using Pinterest, this might be of interest to you. Um, when you click on a pin, you're going to see this is a repin. When you pin it, it used to say repin on this button. So you can like it, which is the same as Facebook and Twitter. You click the like. You can visit the website which, of course, if you click on the picture, you should also go to the website. Uh, you can send it in a private message to one of your friends. You can post it to Facebook. But all the information that you get, you'll get the website, you'll get the description from the person who posted it. You'll also get the board that it came from. And then it shows you images that are also on that board. So if you see something that piques your interest, this is um, looks like a child getting um, his blood pressure taken. So you can click on these if you want to. Uh, we already follow this board, but if we didn't, it would say follow, so you could follow it. Then it gives you more pins from the same website. You can see a couple of them are the same. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see this is the person who pinned it. This is where she repinned it from. And then this pin was also on these boards. Um, and this is a really good tool if you're looking for boards to follow like that one I'd probably follow because it's all about public health. You can click here to see more boards. Um, it might go on forever when you do. Um, there's a lot of public health boards on Pinterest. But it's a great way to um, find people to follow if you're new to Pinterest. And then finally at the bottom, it has related pins. And these are pins that um, Pinterest has deemed related to your pin. They probably have public health keywords. Um, they could come from the same website. They could come from the same board. So whatever Pinterest deems um, related to your pin is what you'll see there. So that's everything that they show with the pin. And uh, you would just click this button, pin it, to pin it to one of your boards. We have 24 boards, which I think is kind of the sweet spot because you, you only have to scroll down a little bit to see them all. But yet we, we, we don't have any really broad subjects. Everything's kind of narrowed down. So I like it. So this would be something that we would put on our main public health board. And on this screen, Pinterest will show you the three boards that you just pinned to most recently, which kind of makes it easier if you're pinning in the same t uh, subject. It will also show you all of your boards. Um, this one would most likely go on our public health board. So we would just click there. And you'll see it says Save to your public health board. And you might also like this. Um, Pinterest is really good at showing you things that you might also like. And another way that you can pin is by using the add-on button. On, uh, I, I'm on Chrome. They have it on Mozilla. Um, I'm sure that they have it on Safari. I don't think they have it for Internet Explorer. But you're cruising the web, and you find something you want to pin, and you just click the Pin button. And I wanted to show you this one in particular. This is our main website. Um, normally, you'd find a more refined, uh, more specific page on our website. But um, just for the sake of um, showing you this, you'll see that in, um, we have a lot of pictures on our website, but this is in a flash movie, and Pinterest can't pull those pictures. So when we hit pin, it gives you this really ugly cross-stitch looking thing. And this was Pinterest's way of solving the problem um, before if it didn't have a picture, you couldn't pin it. Uh, without going through a lot of rigmarole. So this was their way to fix it. But this is really, really ugly. And you can change it to say um, whatever you want, but it's still ugly. And, and you really you don't want to put something on Pinterest that looks like that because it's all visual and nobody's going to want to click on it. So you can see this is the one that I pinned that's just from our website. But what I did was another way that you can pin on Pinterest. There's this little plus sign down here. Now if you hit click pin from website, it's the same as using the um, add-on button, the plugin. So um, that's just for people who don't have the plugin. And Pinterest will kindly remind you to please install the Pinterest browser button. Uh, so you hit the plus sign, 
you grab a picture. I think I have a I don't think I have any pictures on my desktop here, but here's one. And so you get to pick which board you wanted to put it on, just like before, description just like before. And then you can type in our website. And that's what I did here. I picked a nice picture of a baby. Everybody loves babies. Had a nice description. I used hashtags. Um, you definitely want to use hashtags on Pinterest. So it looks a whole lot better. when you. This one looks so much better than this one. So you want to take a little time on your pins if Pinterest happens to do something like that with your pin. So you can repin other people's pins. You can add a pin with the plus sign, or you can use the plugin to pin. So there's three different ways to pin. And when you um, pick up a pin, let me do this one, you can see you can like it, visit the website, you can edit it because I'm the one that posted this one. So there's also three types, three main types of pins on Pinterest, just really quickly. There are um, picked for you pins. You'll see it says picked for you. Um, so they picked this pin because we have a pet health and safety board. Uh, Pinterest picked this pin for me because they thought that we would like it. And it can be inspired by many things, boards you follow, boards you have. Um, and you can turn them off. And there was an instance where I had to use that because we have a pet health and safety board. It was showing me um, really horrific pictures of animal abuse. And I just yeah, I can't handle that at work. And so I did have to turn it off. Um, and you can turn it off just for a specific board, or you can turn them all off. So um, Pinterest is really flexible with that. The um, other kind of pin is a promoted pin. You'll see it says promoted by, and those work exactly the same way as sponsored tweets and promoted posts on Facebook. So you know how those work. And the final kind of pin are rich pins. And uh, Raid's going to talk about um, place pins, so I'll leave that up to him. This is an article pin. You'll see the picture, the title. Sometimes you'll see the author. Uh, you see the page it comes from, and then there's a description of the article. And the majority of pins, I would say, look a lot like that. You have an app pin. This also happens to be promoted, but it's an app pin. And when you click it, um, it will take you directly to where you can download the app. So that's the only thing that really makes it different. Um, you have a product pin. When you're looking at pins on Pinterest, it will look like this side. And when you click it, it will show you the price of the pin, where it's coming from. And when you click this pin, it will take you directly to the page where you can purchase it. So it's really good for retailers on Pinterest. You can also have a recipe pin. And this is one of the things that Pinterest was kind of known for uh, because like I said, it was originally for crafters and cooks. So this is what the pin looks like. When you click it, it comes up with um, the recipe. It says how long it takes to make, how many people it serves, the um, ingredients and how to cook it. Um, so it has all of this information. And the great thing is this information feeds directly from the website. So you and Pinterest do not have to update it. The website is responsible for updating it. And uh, Reed is going to show more about that during his section as well. The final kind of rich pin is a movie pin. And I haven't come across this. Uh, it must be you know, the boards I follow don't have movie pins. It will show you the release date, the rating, uh, the director, the people who starred in it, when you click it, it will take you to Netflix to watch it. It will also show you um, the next Netflix rating. I think Ferris Bueller's Day Off deserves a little bit higher than 3.9, but that's my opinion. But I, I never come across these, but if you follow that kind of um, looking, or if you're looking for that kind of information on Pinterest, you might come across those. So those are rich pins because they, they bring you more information. And I wanted to show you your home feed. When you click this little P button, that's the one thing I don't think is very clear on Pinterest. You have to click the P button to get to your home feed. This is kind of like your timeline on Facebook. And I know it looks busy. Um, you can invite friends the same way as Facebook and Twitter. Find friends, same. Uh, these are the pins that you follow, or they're picked for you pins, or they're promoted pins. So the people that I follow, mostly posting about health, obviously. And you, know, you can click the pin. You can read more. People like to put these giant um, infographics on Pinterest. You can read more. They really didn't take advantage of the um, description. And then again, you see all the information that I described. So you can determine whether or not you want to repin it. Just tell them, hey, I like this pin. And this is your notification bar. So you can see we have three notifications. Again, it's similar to Facebook. It will it'll default to the middle one, which is you. It will tell you things that have happened recently. People started following a board. 
uh, people um, started following you. Uh, people pinned your pin, which is a repin. And what I mean by following you is on Pinterest, people can choose to, and they'll probably look better on mine, like I can, if I clicked follow, it would follow all of my boards. It will follow Christy everywhere. But you can see I followed this board and I followed this board because you know I can pull things that are related to some of our boards. But there would be no reason for me to follow anything that's Marilyn Monroe or books, things like that. So you can pick and choose boards to follow, or you can just hit follow all. And um, you know uh, we do that a lot with public health. But when it comes to individuals, we mostly follow a specific board. And um, I was inside the notifications. If you click news. It'll show you notifications for your friends, like um, you know they created, they recently created a new board, things like that. I don't really click on that much. And then here are the private messages. And again, I don't think I would really. Uh, I've never used private messages. I'm sure some people would, but um, I've just never had a use for it. Although, of course, it's another way to um, talk with your constituents. So when you're on your own page. You have your boards, and again, like I said, it will tell you how many boards you have, pins, likes, followers. You can see Hamilton County Public Health has a lot more followers than I do personally. Uh, and of course, from your main page, you can edit your page just like Facebook. You can um, look on here for account settings, find friends, look at promoted pins. And you can, once you have started a board, you can edit that board. You can move pins, so if you've done what I said, and you found a certain category of pins uh, needs to be moved to its own board. You can select them and you can start a new board. You can edit your board. You can also edit the board from here. And the only thing I re ever really do is change the cover. I like to make the co cover something recent that I've pinned just because um, it's really frustrating when you see a great image on somebody's board, uh, but then when you click on it, you have to scroll and scroll and scroll to find this picture. Um, which can be really frustrating. So that is, uh, those are the ins and outs of Pinterest. I wanted to give you a quick look what it looks like from mobile device. I can't seem to get the page to come back up. So let's try this. Sorry about that. Of course. Well, I think I need some help, Lisa. Let's see there. You're trying to log back in? Yeah. Hmm. I can go back to stop sharing and go back to the presentation. Okay. I'm not sure. There we go. Something. Do you want me to go back to the slide? Here we, we go. go. Sorry. No problem. There we go. We're back in. Okay, so quick look at how it looks on mobile. Thanks, Lisa. This is, um, this is my page on Pinterest on my iPhone. You'll see my boards, all the uh, information that was shown. And, um, and then when you look on my home feed, these are what I'm following. And on the, com on the computer, whereas it looked, it looked kind of um, really cluttered and busy, on your phone, it looks much less busy. And 75% and of Pinterest users are using it on a mobile device. So it will look more like this. But I will say that um, the mobile application is extremely similar to the PC application, unlike Facebook. So um, it works out really well. And when you click on a pin, it brings up a larger image. And uh, so you definitely want to optimize your images for mobile. So now that you know how to pin, you're going to wonder what you should pin. And these are some of the most popular categories on Pinterest. When users are on Pinterest, they want you to help them with their goals. Uh, they want to plan for their future or discover things to better their lives. Um, like I said before, women use it to plan. Men use it to buy. So you need to set goals. You need to know your objection, uh, uh, objectives, excuse me, and you need to know your audience. And I think a lot of us who are already using other forms of social media really do know our audience, so we have an advantage there to be able to jump right into Pinterest. And you'll notice on these um, charts that none of the popular categories are related to health. So um, what are you supposed to do? You need to get creative. 
and that's what we did with our Healthy Wiener campaign. We took one of my dachshunds, Rosie, and uh, I put him in a wiener suit, I took a picture, and I started putting him on memes that are related to health and safety as a kind of a form of motivation, and they have caught on very well. I recently um, went through our social media and found that he was among the top five on every network uh, as far as our messages go. Um, you know, and he's, he's a good form of motivation, you know, keep pee out of the pool, don't bring a cold to work like I did today, so I need to listen to Healthy Wiener. And um, so I just created this board on Pinterest, so I really don't know how effective it's going to be on Pinterest. Usually calls to action aren't as great on, uh, on Pinterest, so we'll see how that goes. And um, what Pinterest means to public health really remains to be seen. We're experimenting. Other local health districts are experimenting. I hope you'll experiment, and um, I hope you'll come back in a couple of months and, and let me know how it's going for you. So um, you have to be creative. You also want to do these things. You want to be timely and relevant, so don't post about West Nile if you're in the dead of winter. You need to remember that what works in print does not necessarily work on Pinterest. So, you know, pictures of syphilis stores might be great if you have a brochure about syphilis health, but they would not work on Pinterest. And again, 75% happens on mobile, so zoom in on the pictures. Um, there's a lot of little interesting things about Pinterest. Uh, they say that um, pins that don't have faces are 23% more likely to get a repin, uh, which of course is completely opposite of Instagram. And also that this reddish-orange color that you see here is two times more likely to be repinned than something that's blue, which doesn't really make any sense to me, but there's a, you can Google it. There's a lot of, of little things like that that they suggest. And, um, but really what you need to take out of this is that you, you need to have something beautiful or cute or even shocking. Um, not necessarily syphilis, syphilis sores shocking, but um, you know, shocking nonetheless. So um, I was taking a look at the most pinned categories and the most browsed categories on Pinterest, and they are almost identical. The only difference is the, um, the home feed, which is when you click the P button in Pinterest. Um, so when you start your Pinterest, you're definitely going to want to have a recipe page. And as a public health entity, you know, obviously you can put healthier recipes on that. You're going to want to have a craft page because when people craft, it reduces stress. Which leads, to healthy, uh, which leads to a healthier life, unless you're really horrible at crafts like me, and then you start the Pinterest board of, this is what my craft looked like at home, and this is what the craft looked like on Pinterest, and they will never be on the same page. And then you also want to have something about um, home decor, and we kind of hide that under places and spaces, because if you're thinking about where you want to vacation or the place you want to be, it reduces stress, which leads to healthier life. So I can pretty much make anything fit into a public health uh, message. I, it's been challenging with Healthy Wiener, and we've managed to do it. So it's something that I, I'm hoping will do well on Pinterest. Some things you don't want to do on Pinterest. Um, you do not want to post events. They're high maintenance, and they're uninteresting to pinners. If you have a high profile event with celebrities, like we had our text for health launch and the uh, U.S. Surgeon General was here, then you can post pictures of that after the event. Um, but people aren't interested um, before so. Uh, and staff photos. Uh, save, save all the behind the scenes stuff for Instagram. That's not the kind of stuff that flies on Pinterest. You also don't want to link to a general site, and I, I did so in the uh, tutorial just as an example. But you want to be specific. So if, if um, you're pinning a recipe, it should go directly to the recipe and not some general page on the site where the user has to search because they're going to click out really quickly. Some best practices to remember when you're using Pinterest, don't just repin from others. You definitely want to create your own content, use the add-on, and uh, definitely post from your own website. Uh, check the link. It's really frustrating to get 404 on your screen when you're trying to follow a link on Pinterest. Update the description. Um, you know, the person who posted it, did they just put an X under the description. You have a 500 character limit, so he had a lot of room that he could have 
included um, a description, he could have asked a question to engage his audience. So um, definitely take advantage of the 500 characters to include something, and definitely use hashtags. Um, they haven't caught on on Pinterest, but they will. And um, they're going to be a, a great way to help um, categorize things on Pinterest. A big thing to remember is not to overpin. This person has a board with 9,000 pins on it. Neither she nor the people who follow her are ever going to click on that board and go through 9,000 pins. So like I said, when you get something that keeps coming up and coming up, create a new board and move all those pins to that category. And don't forget to post a disclaimer. We post the same one on um, all of our boards. Pins do not necessarily reflect the views of or act as an endorsement by Hamilton County Public Health. It just um, kind of covers you in case a pin goes awry. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. So uh, the final thing I wanted to talk about is when to pin. According to Pinnerly, which is now called Viral Tag, the best time to pin is between 2 and 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. and 1 a.m. And of course, we can't all be on Pinterest during those times. So you can use outside apps and programs to schedule pins. I personally use Viral Tag. Um, you can also use uh, Curalate, uh, TailwindApp.com, and some others. And we will include that in the resources that will be available after the webinar. So you'll be able to look at all of those. So some key takeaways I want you to go away with today. Pinterest is here to stay. Even if it becomes a niche network, it's not going anywhere. I mean, MySpace is still out there. It has a much smaller audience, but they're very dedicated. So Pinterest isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's easy to use. I think it's really easy to just pick up and go. There are a lot of useful analytics on Pinterest, and Raid's going to talk about that. So I didn't click on the button, but it gives you a lot of information. Um, visual content drives traffic, and your images are going to determine your click rate. So you want to make sure to make your um, images stunning if you can. Keep in mind that pinners are making wish lists. So if you're in the business of public health, and you want them to pin things that will make their lives healthier and safer, or you want to pin things that will inspire them to be healthier and safer on Pinterest. And the final takeaway is the same takeaway I would have for any social network. Consistency is more important than frequency. Don't feel like you have to sit down and pin all the things at once. So uh, happy pinning, and I'm going to turn it back over to Lisa. I believe she's going to take questions. Great. That was excellent, Christy. And we have quite a few questions that came in. Perhaps we'll get um, kind of started from a little bit about uh, you know, this issue of personal versus work. We had a question from Rachel early on about, um, I don't need to create a separate account for work. Can it just be a board under her own account? Maybe you could um, address a little bit about that. Yeah, that's one of the good things about Pinterest. Um, you can go straight into being a business. You can start your page as a business, and you don't have to have a personal profile in order to do so. That's what Facebook does to you. Um, and Pinterest doesn't do that to you. So, and if you are representing an organization, you definitely want to start it as a business page and not as a personal page. There's some differences, and I believe Raid's going to talk about that in his section. There are differences between a business page and personal, but that is one of the great advantages of Pinterest. Great. And I see that Karen wanted to ask a question. Karen, if you want, you can unmute your phone by dialing star 7 to ask the question. Are you there, Karen? Hi. Did that work? It sure did. Welcome. Oh. So hi, thanks. My one of my questions was, um, can you push information out to your followers? In in what way? Well, other than sending, if you send a message, that's just to one person. Right. But can you, you know, send a note out to your 500 people at one time? Um, no, by by pinning to your boards, um, they're hoping that you're pushing out to all of your. Um, followers at once. It kind of works like Facebook in that way where you, you know where you post. Although on Pinterest, I will say they don't do the same thing that Facebook does to pages. All, if all of your followers were on, they would all see the post. Um, Pinterest doesn't pick and choose 
who among your followers gets to see it, which is nice. Um, but as far as sending a personal message, I've never sent a message. I, um, let me see. I'm just looking at it right now. I mean, if you wanted to go through and pick each and every follower one by one, I think you could. Um, but I, you know, that's going to be very time consuming. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question, Karen. And a little bit about content. We had a couple of folks uh, talking about how do you check the credibility of information from Tammy? And then also Chelsea had uh, kind of tagging on to that. When you pin something, do you quality check those links? You know, make sure they work. Are they credible? Uh, yes, I would definitely check the links when you're pinning something. And you know, for the tutorial, I didn't go through and check it. But you definitely want to check and make sure that the link goes to what it says it goes to. Um, spammers haven't really gotten a hold of Pinterest, or I don't know if Pinterest is just really good at, at finding those links. Um, but I, I've never clicked on a link that um, you know, went to a questionable website or anything. Every link I've ever clicked on has gone to um, where it says it does, or to the retailer um, where the product comes from. Um, so Pinterest is really good about that. Great. And Christy, Elizabeth was asking, uh, is there a maximum number of boards that one can have? Maybe you can address that. I don't think that, that there is. Um, I, we had uh, probably 30 at one time, and I've kind of consolidated a little. Um, like I said, I didn't want people to have to scroll and scroll, so I thought 24 was a good number. Um, I don't believe there is a limit to uh, the amount of boards you have. Obviously, if you're getting <laughs> getting into the thousands, that would be uh, ridiculous. But <laughs> like I've seen example. people, <laughs> I've seen people with hundreds of boards. <laughs> um, you know, some people are just crazy pinners, and um, but most of the people I've seen have uh, usually had between ten and thirty. Okay, great. And then Matthew brings up this other um, issue of uh, categories of content. And he was saying if home decor is a popular category, what about a category like community decor to show how important place is to public health? Any ideas on experimenting with something like that? Um, I would definitely experiment with anything you want to experiment on Pinterest. It's one of the good things about Pinterest that you can do things like that, whereas you, you wouldn't do them necessarily on Facebook or Twitter. Um, um, the, the board that he describes definitely sounds like um, something that I would experiment with. And I have done different kinds of boards and, and ended up consolidating things from there. But yeah, definitely be creative with your boards. Great. And I think in interest of time, we'll take one last question. Um, saying about time, Chelsea was asking, how do you manage your time? Uh, for instance, a lot of personal users can really get into a time sink and spend hours here. Maybe just quickly if there's any tips you have on time management. That is definitely true for Pinterest, and I actually have to manage my time when I'm at work because you can get caught up pinning like the, the meme I put at the beginning. Um, when I'm at home, I mean, there's just no limit. I, I did want to go back just for a second. There is a limit to how many boards you can have. It's 500, and you can't have more than 200,000 pins. Um, I don't think you'll ever get there. I just wanted to make sure I, I looked that up. I wanted to address that. But yeah, uh, at work, I generally try not to spend more than 15 minutes on Pinterest. I do try to spend, when we first started, I was, I was maybe doing it once a week, and I started to notice I kind of pin on Fridays because, you know, Fridays you get a little bit of free time when you get everything done. Um, so I started to try to post on different days. I didn't, you know, I didn't want everything we put out there to be on Fridays. And of course, we signed up for Viral Tag, which lets us um, pin, and that helps with the time too, because, you know, I can I can find something on Twitter and say, oh, this would make a great pin, and I schedule it for a time when a lot of pinners are on between 8 p.m. and 1 a.m. Um, but at work, yeah, I try not to do it more than um, 15 minutes. And people uh, on Pinterest, they don't like when you just sit and pin and pin and pin. Um, the recommended number I saw was usually between 10 and 15 pins at one sitting. So once you've done that, so it's not necessarily about time, it's about the number of pins. You don't want to overwhelm somebody. You know, if they're following all of your boards and all you're doing is pin, 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 um, they're going to get annoyed and unfollow you. So I've noticed it's more of 
the amount of pins rather than the time you spend on it. But obviously, if you work for an organization and you have limited time, you might want to even you know, start a timer on your phone to make sure that you're done within that 15, 20 minute time slot. Great. Thanks, Christy. I think that's really important to figure out how best to use the resources that we have, whether it's our time or the tools that we have at hand. So that really helps. And I just want to um, say thank you to everybody for the questions that you're putting in. We have a really good dialogue going on here. We're going to have more time for Q&A after Ray's presentation. So I'm just going to hold those uh, questions that we have and address them in our next Q&A. So thanks very much. Thank you, Christy. That was excellent. And we are going to move forward here and um, kind of dip in a little bit about as uh, Ray's going to take us on a deeper dive here and some other tutorials as well. And we want to know, um, find out what's your biggest challenge in using Pinterest. And um, we'll just go back to the, the poll results, results here. Looks like some it's getting started. A lot here around knowing if you've had any impact. And I think that Ray's going to do a great job of um, giving some insight into that area about analysis and measuring impact. So um, with that, I want to go ahead and um, introduce Ray Mansour. He's the Executive Assistant to the Commissioner at the Chicago Department of Public Health, and RAID leads innovation projects under the Office of the Commissioner, like Food for in Chicago. And he works on building capacity through collaborations with Chicago's civic tech community for the department's data science initiatives, which includes leading projects in predictive anal analytics, app development, and social media that can be applied to public health practice. And Raid is also an adjunct uh, faculty at Boston University's graduate program in health communication. He received a BS from um, Purdue University in neurobiology and animal physiology, an MS in health communication from Boston University, and a certificate in predictive analytics from DePaul University. So Raid, you're going to have a lot of insight for us, and I'm so happy to have you here. And let's see, uh, can we hear you OK, Raid? Thank you, Lisa. Am I, am I clear? You are, loud and clear. Beautiful. Um, thank you, Christy, also for a wonderful presentation. Um, some of the things I'm going to be discussing today um, go from easy to advanced. And some of them are well-known um, features and tools, and others not so well-known. Uh, and that's okay, but there are uh, some things to consider when you start to strategize and plan for Pinterest for your organization. Um, these uh, uh, tools will help your visual storytelling. And these are some of the things I'll be covering. First of all, I know that it's very common sense to fill out your name, put your picture, fill out your bio, um, your city, your website, your social media, and naming your boards. And I'm just uh, reiterating this, that uh, you need to build trust within your community. And if you are not putting your, your brand, your logo up, or completing the name of your organization, uh, don't go public. Keep it secret. As Christy showed, you can start with Pinterest, without making it go public. And I'm going to discuss some of the ways to verify your website shortly. But uh, it's very important when you think of the concept of multi-channel marketing. Um, you want a consistent brand experience no matter what device or what platform you're using. You want your, your customers, your, uh, your followers, your fans, to experience the same brand, whether it's on Pinterest, your website, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, the bio is consistent. The logo is consistent. The name is consistent. Um, extend your reach thoughtfully. And uh, think of yourself as some of these uh, larger corporations. Uh, the logos are recognizable no matter what platform you're on. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And if you don't have time like they do, or the resources or money, uh, don't jump in and something 
where Christie has the resources. I recall when uh, a few years ago when Pinterest came out, somebody decided to open it up for the department here. <clears throat> and all it had was a logo and the name. And the name didn't even fit because uh, it was really long. And it was truncated. And so this is not that image you want as you know, uh, a reputable health department. Uh, it looks half done and uh, with half effort. So uh, be careful to make sure that you put, uh, fill in as much information as you can. So uh, uh, one of the things I'm going to show you here next is uh, don't be this guy. <laughs> Uh, I hope this person isn't in the audience. If they are, that's great. Yeah, maybe we can all learn something. Um, but they have no logo. They uh, named some boards, but the boards are empty. Uh, they started following people, which I don't know why. Um, and they started liking things, thinking they'll get a following. Uh, but they only have one photo in eHealth, one photo in Ergo. I'm thinking ergonomics, maybe. Uh, some good categories, tech, medicine, food, but it's not ready for prime time. So keep it secret and uh, don't uh, go public until you're ready. Um, one of the easiest things I see with some organizations, uh, they miss on verifying their website. And it's as easy as just entering your website into that space in the bottom there and click Verify Website. You're given some nonsensical uh, string of characters that you'll be entering into a website and say, you don't run your content management system or your website, so what am I to do? Well, your IT person definitely can handle this. So uh, the reason I bring this up to show you how easy it is you yourself can do if you, you, know, you run the whole show <clears throat> or you have an IT staff and they might not know this or it's not part of their you know, wheelhouse, so you, you just uh, make sure that they get it and you explain the importance uh, for your organization and for your brand. Uh, having a Pinterest without a verified website uh, doesn't lend to that much trust if you're a large organization. And you do have a website, but you're not able to list it on Pinterest because you want it verified. And uh, that only means that uh, the person who is opening this Pinterest account is actually who they are based on that website. So if your organization is a local health department, you have a website, you want a Pinterest account, you want that uh, uh, Pinterest account to show that website is verified. And what you do in return, and I, I uh, barred in red, uh, this is on my blog. I verified uh, the Pinterest, this uh, long character of strings. You put it in there, and uh, once Pinterest recognizes that this code is in your website, uh, you will get a check mark, uh, a red check mark, saying that the site is verified. Now the next tool that I think can extend, um, and we're talking about websites, and this is all supposed to be about Pinterest, um, but some people, like I saw 50% uh, that are attending this um, webinar, uh, aren't on Pinterest. But I almost, I should have asked that poll question, how many have websites that don't have Pinterest? So we all have a website, or our organization has a website, and uh, it's one way to introduce your fans that also might be a little hesitant into, uh, into getting into Pinterest. So adding this widget, which is just like a, a, a dynamic button. Say you see the Pinterest logos on websites. Um, but this is a way kind of to extend that, to show uh, a board or several boards. You can show the whole account if you want, but uh, I would say real estate's uh, kind of uh, limited on websites sometimes. So I like this widget. Um, I put this on my blog, and it highlights uh, one of my favorite boards on my Pinterest account, uh, my health communication social media account, I mean board. Uh, that's crowdsourced, and I'll talk about that later. Um, and it shows some of the pins on there, and you can click 
see on Pinterest on the bottom. To build it is really easy. You just get into Widget Builder, right into your account. There's a Tools section, um, and uh, Pinterest really makes it easy for you. Like, again, like I said, you can always take these ideas, ideas to IT. Um, uh, they are uh, really easy to do. <clears throat> of course, you're going to have to talk to your web uh, website designer and you have a good plan of where you're going to put this um, on your website. But uh, a widget's a good idea to highlight some of those boards. I like a sidebar. It's out of the way. Um, and uh, the hardest part of this is uh, uh, playing around with the height or width. Um, to make sure it comes uh, in at the size you want. And um, basically, you copy this code. Again, you give it to uh, your, um, your IT folks, or if you know how to run your content management system, it's something to experiment with. Now, this was touched upon uh, by Christy regarding joining as a business. Um, one of the things, the, the reason we say join as a business, is that it offers you a lot of added value. Um, you may be a university, a nonprofit, a CBO, a local health department. Uh, you should still join as a business. Uh, on Facebook, I know when they do pages, you have to pick, I think there's 50 choices. Uh, but here, uh, once you get started, it offers you a lot of tools, a lot of emails. You get the deep links, uh, the deep rich links that Christy talked about uh, that could, uh, I don't know, if you have a service, you could monetize it, whether you want to highlight courses um, as a university. Um, you can uh, uh, get metrics on what people are clicking on. And I think there was a question about how do you measure impact? Um, uh, it offers you this, and I'll show you the analytics shortly. Um, but uh, I joined as a business, and I'm not selling anything. Um, I just wanted the metrics. Uh, so even if you joined as an individual, uh, you can switch it to a business account very easily. Um, and one of the other things, I saw a question, uh, you know, I think this was answered, but um, I have an individual page. Why don't I just do a business board? Well, that's not good marketing, I would say. Uh, you're going to confuse people. Uh, mixing in personal with business isn't always the best thing. Um, uh, you'll have private boards. Maybe uh, your business partners aren't uh, too keen on your some of your recipes maybe. <laughs> Uh, they might be turned off. So don't give people an excuse to uh, click away. And it's very easy for people to click away. So remember, maintain your brand's consistency on your boards. Uh, join as a business and keep it as a business. I, for one, I wanted to experiment um, and learn more about Pinterest. Uh, some of the activities I do here at the department is social network analysis and understanding our population, what people are interested in. Um, and some of the things uh, I do is play around with social media a lot and uh, understanding it so that uh, we can get the usefulness out of it. I didn't want to be that person again of just joining for the sake of joining and jumping on the bandwagon. So you get analytics, and uh, you get to see uh, demographics. Uh, you get to see what people are interested in, your audience. Uh, they're not going to be interested in uh, quitting smoking or health. But as Christy showed, you can turn it around. Um, use similar interests. Uh, animals are popular. Uh, babies' faces, I think we discussed before, are popular. Uh, look what your audience is reading and see if you can translate that. Someone had a wonderful idea. Uh, how do you decorate your community? Uh, health in all places. So uh, that's great. Uh, it, it adds to that health in uh, all policies. So um, uh, you get to see which are the most active boards that you pinned. And you get to see uh, in 30 days, I think it's customizable. 
uh, what people like. And you'll see I, it's a personal board. People love that Ezekiel taco uh, tortilla that I pinned. Um, but they also like that other book, Health Communication Theory. So um, food is big. Uh, books, I'm uh, in a niche kind of uh, area in health communication, uh, really hyper-focused. Uh, it's a hyper-focused board. Um, so I'm not worried about getting tens of thousands of followers. I'm more interested in those people that are interested in health communication. I know sometimes we go with that approach of as many as we can, but are they useful? So um, in the hundreds, I'm happy uh, with that. I see that the book uh, is making impressions, and people are repinning it or clicking on it. Uh, and I'll show you some of these books on my board, on my Pinterest board, shortly. Now we're going to talk about someone had, uh, had a question about pinning. How much time do you spend pinning? And Christy gave a great um, uh, 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 advice on uh, setting some time. Sometimes I find pins I'm not even planning on doing Pinterest. And if you uh, see this, this is a, a tool you can add to Chrome. And uh, it makes pinning faster. And what I'm going to do is bounce out of this and go to, my, uh, to a website where I can show you how this works. It's a really neat uh, feature that uh, comes with Chrome. It's the browser. Um, but you can uh, add that little... Uh, pen to the bookmark on Safari or Explorer too. But this is a special tool just unique to Chrome, and I'll show you what I mean here shortly. So if you see, I'm on uh, Barnes & Noble, and just say that I'm just uh, shopping for a book and I see something I like. Uh, there's a couple things that this little uh, pen it tool does. If you see, I hover over it, you see this pin it just pops up. And uh, you'll see here, pin it is already added to Barnes & Noble trying to encourage you to pin this book. Um, but this tool finds images on the page. And I'm like, oh, I can just pin it from here. Or if you want to know all the images that are on Pinterest, just go to where it says pin it here. It gets added to your bookmark bar. And if you do that, it finds only one photo. So we're good here. And I can just X out of it. Or I can just go to the book itself. It does the same thing. Oops, sorry. Let me see if we can reload it. There it is. Or you can bring it up here. No matter what you choose, you still have uh, uh, a choice here to edit. Um, I like using the hashtag. Um, it categorizes the subject. And as it becomes more uh, used, uh, at least you'll, you won't have to go back to all your boards and start using hashtags again. I always use um, this board, and you can just pin it. And I've already pinned this on my, uh, on my board, so I'm not going to pin it again. So let me see if I can go back. There we go. And this just gives you an idea of some of the things we went over. You can uh, just pin it on this board, and it takes you through the steps. Easy breezy, right? And now we have a board. We have some nice pins. And I'm going to show you uh, the board I pinned it in. We're going to go back. And this is where, let me see, where, somewhere down here. And it makes the point, there it is. So I pinned it here, but as you can tell, um, this board is starting to get messy. Uh, there's infographics, articles, books, and my interest is health communication and social media, but how about just books in general? Now, as Christy pointed out, you can use the search uh, feature, but uh, what about others that may be looking for your pins and don't have the exact hashtag you use or the title you use? Or uh, they'll get lost and say, this is too much. 
um, and or uh, they bounce out of your your board and uh, they, I, what I want to do is see if I can highlight these pins. And this is kind of an advanced feature that I was playing around with. I didn't learn it from anywhere. It was just I wanted to create a library from Pinterest. Now, I, I thought of creating a new board of just books. But this is a crowdsourced um, board. That means I have a lot of people pinning on it. And I didn't want to lose its value and thin out its uh, value by creating a new board, a board that no one might not be familiar with or the other, p the other pinners that are pinning on this board might not follow me in the other board. So what I did is create this library on my blog. And as you can see, it's just all the books from Pinterest around health communication. Um, the reason I did it, a lot of students, a lot of professors, a lot of people ask me about what books do I recommend. And I wish it was just a one-shop stop. You can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I thought that this was the easiest way to create a Pinterest library on health communication books. So I want to explain how I did this. And it's, it's kind of technical. Um, but uh, uh, it's doable. And just as a background, as uh, Lisa explained in my bio, uh, nowhere did she explain that I'm a coder. Um, so I taught myself a little, and I, I would highly recommend a website called W3 Schools. It's uh, uh, HTML code. All you do is write down what you want it to do on a website, and it brings up the code. Um, and I can discuss some of this uh, shortly. Uh, the biggest case for doing this, like I said, I don't want people to leave my board. And I wanted to organize my pins. Let me just show you what this does, by the way, before I show you the code. So here's that book I pinned that's way in the bottom of my Pinterest board, as you can see here, all the way in the bottom, where I don't know if people will go all the way there searching for that book. It's the book I use in my course. So. Um, what that does when I put it on my blog or you put it on your website, it opens up right in my Pinterest page. It goes right to that book. And if you click on it, it goes right to Barnes & Noble. So we can click out of that, and we can click out of this, and go back to this. So how do we get here? And bear with me. Let's organize this a little in three steps, really easy. Um, we're going to see if we can organize the clutter, uh, find some of these books, and place them on your website to make it look neat like this. Number one, step one, copy the link from uh, your Pinterest, and I'll, I'll go over this on my board, that you find on the address bar. Just right click and copy that. That's the link to your Pinterest board. Now save it there. Now I hope I don't lose anyone when I show this. Just paste it into this area. Um, you'll see that href. That just means where you want the, your link to uh, come from. And just copy all this. Don't worry about um, uh, the rest of it. Just copy that portion uh, in gray before the link and after the link. Target blank. That means I want it to open in a new page. Your next step is I want that image. You see how clean that library was. That, that, that library was organized. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to start formatting pictures. I want the exact photo from that book. So I'm just going to right click right on the photo, and, it's, and you'll see there right in the mid, mid section, copy image URL. You copy that, and you paste it on the second section. You see IMG SRC, that just means image source, the source of the image. And uh, it's a whole bunch of uh, just uh, numbers and letters. There's a JPEG. Uh, don't worry about any of that. Just copy, paste. And then the next thing you're going to do is find a height and, and width. And that's all I did was play around with a height and width that can organize all these. And believe it or not, it made them all into the same size. 
and that's what I wanted. It didn't even warp the photos. And then you'll get this. So I'm going to go back to my blog, and I'm going to show you. <laughs> this is basically how it looks. It's kind of scary, but it is just repeated over and over again. And here's the visual portion. It's just the books organized over and over again. Link and picture of link. So if I just show you here, here's the link right there. And here's the image source right there. And here's the, the height and the width of it. So it's a good way to extend your channel. Um, say that you have something you want to highlight uh, from your organization, that you have a pretty good board, um, but you'd like to extend it onto your website. Um, like I said, just understand the mechanics uh, if, if it's too much. But uh, for sure, discuss this with your IT and see if this is possible. Um, I found it useful. I found a lot of professors liked it. Um, it goes to both my web page, it goes to my Pinterest page, and it really it, it, it kind of uh, sets, a, sets a feeling that I know what I'm talking about in health communication. I've looked at some of these books. I know what I can offer. So if you find something similar to match it, I'd highly recommend uh, giving it a try. I'm sure I'll be getting some questions, but uh, it's a feature that I really uh, discovered and uh, enjoy that I did. Let me go back here. Okay. The other thing that I discovered is crowdsourcing your boards on Pinterest. And what that means is having several people pinning on your board. And um, initially I invited some friends I graduated college with that were in health communication. And uh, we built up, I built up this trust. And I trusted them. Um, that's the biggest thing. Uh, there was talk about do you trust the links? Do you trust the website it's coming from? With this, you have to trust the person that you're inviting to your board. Um, if you're an organization, you might not want other individuals because you want to maintain your brand's consistency. But it might be in line with the CDC or another public health organization. Maybe. I thought this would be great, a crowdsourced board of all public health organizations or universities or um, uh, community-based organizations within a city uh, to have a crowdsourced board. Uh, that would be fun to see. You can see the community active around this board, and it can be around a subject like diabetes or heart disease um, uh, or other things that, are, that you find a commonality in. And that's the key. You don't want to be sort of self-centered um, with this, and I wasn't when it came to uh, health communication and social media. There's things I like, but there's, uh, this is a way of adding to your board from other people that, uh, uh, about things they may not know of, I may not know of. So it was good. Now, I'll tell you, one of my uh, uh, trusted pinners on here, their account was spammed, and they, uh, someone was pinning 20 or 30 pins a day onto my board about genes. And I, <laughs> I was wondering what was going on with her. I know that she's a, she has a PhD in health communication, and she can't be that fanatical about blue genes, uh, especially to be pinning them on a health communication board. So I know her account was compromised. I just... Um, uh, deleted her from that account, and I added her after she was able to clean house. So that's the risk there. Um, one thing that this crowdsourcing does, though, and let me take you to um, my Pinterest board where we're crowdsourcing. Here. Um, one thing it does, I look for public health first. And it brought me people in public health. And I've invited all these people to pin. Um, and sometimes you don't win. A lot of people don't want to, you know, uh, these are still, they haven't responded, if you're out there watching. Um, 
uh, didn't add me to their board. But what happens is you'll see here in the corner uh, all the people. You can just click invite and add people to the board. And you'll see other people pinned here. Um, uh, your board now, I have uh, 31 uh, invitees that are pinning with me. That means that this board is on 31 other accounts. So it really extends your reach. Um, it, your board is displayed, and they can put it in any order they want. They can put it in the beginning or they can put it in the end. So you might not show up, but it is shared on their account. And that's one way, I think, to extend your reach uh, nicely with some trusted partners. I believe that we have uh, um, some good partners here uh, and in public health. And I can see uh, this uh, being utilized even by universities with similar degrees or uh, similar uh, sharing resources. It might be something fun to do. All right. And uh, one of the newest features on Pinterest is something called a map feature. I don't know if we have time to go over this. Um, it does require you to use Foursquare. Um, the images might not be good or relevant. Uh, you see here, I just put a little cap and gown with some books because there were no photos at that university. And it named it, it's supposed to be a university, but Foursquare someone uh, named it as an optical shop. So you, you're kind of stuck with whatever people uh, do on Foursquare. I just uh, mapped HealthCom degrees here um, uh, as a Pinterest board, but you can easily, I was going through some ideas. Uh, perhaps you have clinic locations that you want to attribute to uh, a Pinterest board or condom locations or community resources. Uh, that would be a good idea. Um, you can change the photos. You can edit some of the verbiage. But I would uh, definitely, its uh, limit is Foursquare. And if you don't know how to use Foursquare, uh, it might be a little challenging, but it's not that hard. So some best practices um, that I've learned. I practice with a personal account. Don't mix business and personal. Uh, secret boards, I'm allowed to make a mistake without anyone calling me out on it. Uh, dedicate some time to research. Um, a right fit for your organization. Have a strategy. Visuals tell a story. So if you're not capturing photos to match your content, and that's key, um, because uh, photos are content. Um, uh, and if you're, if you're not creating content, then Pinterest is the least of your concerns. But uh, uh, if you have content, but you don't have these photos that uh, can create a, a, a good visual story, it might be easier for you to curate photos like I did with those books than to create uh, um, uh, uh, new photos. It's a way to tell a story um, for a short term, uh, I've been doing it for a while. Uh, you can still tell a story. You may not own all those photos, but it's out there in public and you can create a good story um, on Pinterest. And I've provided some helpful resources uh, that I'll give to Lisa uh, in the end here um, that can help you with uh, the rest of Pinterest we didn't discuss. Um, and I'll leave it up to you guys to ask any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. That was great. I mean, it's a great follow-up to Christy in terms of um, you know, looking under the hood and, and really thinking how you could extend your reach, as you said, and, and give us some um, tips and strategies for doing that extension. So we'll take some time um, in just a bit for some Q&A, and um, go ahead and type any other questions you might have in the chat box, and we'll do our best to address that, but um, let us know, how are you feeling right now? We just took a journey together, looked under the hood, we even talked about code and shared a, a site for um, resources in that area. How are you feeling? Getting there, excellent, and we have some folks feeling more confident. That's great. And we're going to have to share some resources after the event with the links to the recording and the slides, so hopefully that will um, further nudge you along the continuum there. And um, let's get started with some questions in the time that we have left together. Um, I have Christy unmuted as well, so I think, we're going to see, 
Megan had a question. Um, if either of you could address whether it's more effective to have the health education message in the PIN image itself, like an infographic, or as a teaser that serves to drive the visitor to a website where the health education content actually lives. What do you think? I think it depends. I think if um, it, if it's a call to action, you probably want it in the image because it's the image that's going to catch people's attention and not everybody clicks through on Pinterest to check the link. Um, I try to always do that, but not everybody does it. So, you know, like with our Healthy Wiener campaign, if, if the call to action is you know, actually on the picture, I think it will get shared more quickly uh, and be dispersed amongst pinners on Pinterest. But, you know, if it's, um, you know, like if we get media coverage, obviously uh, we're going to tease them in the description, but we want them to click on the link to go to the media coverage or to go to our website. So it kind of depends on um, what you're posting. Anything you wanted to add on that, Raid? No, that was uh, that's uh, my thinking uh, exactly. Right, and Raid, well, you're talking about crowdsourced uh, boards. Matthew had a question in terms of an admin. Can you delete images? If that's yes, you yes. Um, when those genes popped up, um, I was on a, uh, I was deleting them uh, on my laptop because I couldn't, I couldn't delete them on mobile. I, uh, it was frustrating because, as Christy said, I use I use mobile a lot, and so I had to wait to get home. I remember seeing 20 pins pop up in the morning, like, oh my gosh, I gotta wait eight hours <laughs> before I can delete images of uh, genes on my board. So yeah, you have the you have total control of the board. Now they can opt out and not want to contribute as a pinner, um, but you could also delete them as a, uh, it's your board, you own it, uh, and you could uh, edit some of their, uh, uh, their uh, pins. So it's your board. And they could actually invite pinners. So I, I have it open. I have a good, trustworthy community. Uh, I don't think they're going to do, do anything crazy. Um, it's pretty focused. I even get people that would like to be invited. Um, they request it personally so they can be on the board. So uh, it really is humbling. So I, I've appreciated uh, this board. And like I said, I didn't plan it. Uh, it just ha it, it, it morphed into this. Yeah, and just to add to what Raid said, like um, we have a social media for public health board, and Raid is one of the people who can post to that board. Um, and as much as I trust him, I actually click the link so that um, people we invite to post that board can't invite other people because I just like to have control of who actually posts to our board. So like he said, it's, um, no, it's not that I don't trust him <laughs> at all. <laughs> I see, just like I don't blame you. You see, yeah, you, have have a, you have a dedicated <laughs> brand that you have to police over where it's just me. Right. Yeah. And I don't want not to give it any, uh, you know, that it's lighter. I really uh, appreciate everybody that's on here. Uh, Christy's on there too, um, but it's um, it's a different story when it comes to uh, a brand that's that recognizable. Kind of in relation to that, maybe both of you could weigh in quickly on in terms of talking about brand. And Ray, you talked about curating photos in order to tell and show stories. Any tips in terms of guidance on being able, you know, we're talking in the series a lot about visual storytelling. How do you do that on Pinterest well to um, tell your organization's story of who you are, what you do, why it's important? I think looking at uh, Christie's board, you know, the headings, it shows, you know, it's lighthearted, but their focus on health is there. Uh, so my focus on social media, you want to tell the story and imagine these boards as like uh, Act One. It's a title to an opening scene. And then the dialogue is the instruction uh, or the description that you give to each pin. So, and you can organize them in order to tell that story. Um, so useful images. Um, putting images that are not related, might, uh, the audience might not, you know, quote unquote, get it. 
So be sure to use the communication skills that you would use in your everyday work. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, people have been communicating uh, through visuals for thousands of years. Uh, this is just another format. So don't make it complicated. Don't make it uh, uh, detailed and obstructive. Uh, and you'll see how Christy pointed out blue you know, and reds, uh, pictures and faces. Uh, these are simple things, Sim simple things that get a quick story across um, to your audience. Great, thank you, Reid. And uh, we have time for a couple more questions. Chelsea, you know, getting back to this issue of impact and measurement and analytics, she was asking, well, how do you know that your pins are actually reaching your target audience? Because this Pinterest audience, as we've seen with some of the things <laughs> we've covered, it's very wide and, and just wondering how do you integrate some targeting capabilities here? I can uh, just speak yeah. for what I've seen. It seems like blog posts don't go as far, um, and that books books worked, or you know, like Christy probably can point out, you know, the recipes probably work better. Uh, uh, the infographics are very popular. Um, so uh, f for my case, uh, those are the strongest performing. So you know. You don't really know when you first start out. You might have a pretty good idea. And that's when you start testing messages or pins and uh, photographs. And don't be afraid to like do like A B testing. All right. That's how we got around the healthy wiener and just happened to do it on one photo and um, you know, we've got a couple responses. Um, you know, on Twitter that's kinda of rare for public health. So um we just grew it into something bigger. Thank you. I think, let's see, I think we addressed a little bit. Mary had asked about this issue of monetizing. Can you make money on Pinterest? Uh, for instance, on YouTube, there's pays per click. And I think you mentioned a little bit about that right on that um, Pinterest for Business page. Yeah, the monetizing, I don't, Pinterest is not going to pay you, uh, unlike uh, uh, Google is. Um, what they do offer is advertising. That's how they're going to make money, sponsorship. Um, but you're making money if you are selling something um, by creating first a website that's going to hold this picture and the rich links, the, the deep links with the cost, the description. Uh, so you're extending your advertising into another channel. So that's how you're going to make money. Pinterest is not going to cut you a check, though. Right. Great. Well, I, I think we have lots to um, mull over here, uh, great tips and strategies to move forward. And with that being said, you know, I, um, our guest speakers have generously offered to keep the conversation going. So please feel free to um, contact them. And we are going to be putting together some resources after the event to share with you all. And I just want to thank you all for some really great um, engagement here, and especially to our speakers. That was excellent. And um, we we're feeling just really um, honored to be able to have some folks out in public health field uh, sharing with us what is working and what um, we can take up ourselves to do our jobs better. So. Thank you to uh, Christy and Raid so much, and for all of you for joining us. Uh, I just want to kind of put a feather in your cap. Think about, well, what can you put into action or, or start to think about putting into action after today's webinar in terms of furthering your own goals with using Pinterest? And uh, let us know. There's going to be a brief um, survey that will come up after the webinar. We are very appreciative of your feedback and also learning about um, what you'd like to hear from us in terms of offerings in the future. And that being said, I just want to invite you all. Our next webinar is going to be about using Instagram for health. And we have guests from UCLA Health and the Pediatric AIDS Coalition at UCLA. So we hope to find you there. And if you have any questions, um, reach out, connect with us, and let us know. And in the meantime, um, just wishing you all well. Thanks again for joining us, and have a good rest of the afternoon. Thanks, Christian Raid.
Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa.